there's a new sprite and some costumes, but what about changing that costume? Well, notice vector mode, just like the cat. So it's really easy to remove the head. But there's a problem, isn't there? You can't copy and paste. So what would be the best way to, how do you get a head to go on to the other parts of the character? Well, handy trick about to happen. I'm going to take Pico stand. Ooh, but look. There's another problem too. Do you see if I go between walk and stand, the body is in a different place, which means the head's in a slightly different place. So students are going to have to be careful as they're working with different costumes to make sure that things line up. So how would we do that? Well, let's duplicate. I'm going to shift click on Pico stand and just go over a few things. I will make sure that I'm clicking. Ah, and look, the stand costume was not grouped by default. Remember the cat from the earlier tutorial? The cat was grouped, so when I used the select tool and clicked on it, it would all move together. Undo that to make sure my position is where I want it to be. It's ungrouped, which means the head is all these different parts that have to be clicked on. But what I might suggest to students is rather than deleting the whole head, what if I just delete this hat part? Oh no! When I do it, it's removing part of the head because they didn't draw the underlapping parts. But still, it might be useful to have this as a starter. We are in vector mode, so have you gone through the maze game tutorial where you reshape the cat's mouth? Couldn't you use the reshape tool to redraw the head a bit? Let's zoom in just a bit more with the magnifying glass. Click the reshape tool and click to select the head. Now, I need to be careful. I'm not going to spend a lot of your valuable time designing things for you. That's something that the students will be doing on their own. So let me just show you what I would do to quickly create a more customized head. Now, with the cat mouth, all you needed to do was to adjust one control point to click and drag it to be the difference between open and closed. But here, rather than just dragging points. I also want to show you that you can add points. So if I click between control points once, watch what happens. It adds a new control point and I can now click and drag that control point just like the other control points. If I want to delete a control point I can just click on an existing point. Click on an existing point. So that will delete a control point. Notice, in some cases, there are multiple points. So I might need to click a few times, depending on how many are there. See, there's another one. I went one too many, so I'll just undo there. There are a few other fancy things you can do here, like this. What did I just do? I actually broke the shape apart, which then removed the fill. I'll show you how that happens. I'll just go back just did some multiple undos. If I click on a point, it should delete it. This one is having some trouble. I think it's a bug in the offline version. That must be the origin point, so it keeps thinking that I want to add more points. But I'll click on this one. 
see the origin point is a little bit darker so it doesn't want you to delete that origin it's not sure what to do but watch if I shift click on a point see it broke it open it removed the link between those two points well how do you put the points back together so that you could fill if I try to use the color a shape tool now and click it won't work because that only works on closed shapes so I will use my reshape tool again click on the shape and watch if I click and drag a point onto another point it becomes solid and when I let go it creates a unified shape again so now I can move that one point around and if I use the color shape tool again boom so pretty cool yeah, I want to delete the extras Because it's vector mode, you can also change the line thickness. So that might be another way to customize a character. That's really handy if you resize. Let's say that you want to make a smaller head. We'll add the eyes back later. Notice when I shrunk it by shift clicking on a corner and resizing it, it also made the thickness of the line smaller. So I can bring that thickness back up to match the approximate thickness of the rest of the character. Let's see. Doing multiple undos until it snaps back in. If I want to resize the entire face together, draw an outline around all the parts, group it. And if I hold the shift key, I can resize them uniformly. This is without the shift key where you're stretching. I like to uniformly resize my character. So we have a head. I'm going to add some hair. Yeah, might be a better idea for hair to choose it to be a filled shape first. And I can add the hair. Go back into the reshape tool. And watch, I'll just drag hair down. adjust adjust wow reshape works so well for hair and it's an especially useful tool for people that aren't confident in their digital drawing skills because it allows more flexibility in working with shapes you'll also see that it can simplify animating so let's say that this is close enough to what I wanted to do for the face. I'm not going to worry about the body too much yet because that's a little more complicated. It just means I'll have to duplicate my work for it. But how do we apply this face to these bodies? Well, I should show you how to export and import costumes. Watch what I'll do. I'm gonna remove the body and then shift click on the costume. In the online version I save to local file and I'll just save it on the desktop and I'll call it scratch head one now watch what I can do I can go to my existing sprites and I can 
import that head. I saved it on my desktop. Handy to be sorted by date, so it appears right at the top. And now I can place that head directly on the body. Maybe I should delete. Let's see, now this one is grouped together. So I'll need to do a whole lot of delete, and I'm a little concerned. If I go back and forth between costumes, I might lose my ability for multiple undos, to undo multiple times. So I'm going to delete that head, and let's go back to duplicating the stand, just so I can show you, because I don't want to mess with what I have there for costumes. So here, I will select and delete all that stuff and then I'm gonna import the head but you've probably noticed another problem I have to line up the head carefully for each of these which is kind of a pain see there are so many things I need to line up so can you think of a better way to deal with the head rather than having to adjust it in all the different costumes. This is what I was building up to. What if, instead of putting a new head on all the costumes, where some costumes are even have the body in different positions, we can do this. Create a new sprite. Uh, but let's do it as a paint new sprite. and import the costume here. I can upload costume from a file, scratch head one, and remove it here. Then I can set sprite one to overlap on Pico. I bet there is a way to do that with code, right? So if we say when green flag clicked forever go to player watch now if I click the green flag when I move the head will follow no matter which arrow key I use But you'll want to adjust the costume so that the head points. See, it's only pointing in one direction to the right. So using this technique, it would be important to also make sure to use the point in direction trick that was used earlier. Remember? On the player, for kick, we set a variable that keeps track of the direction that the cat is facing. So we could use that same set to direction for, remember the ball point in direction, cat direction? What if I just click and drag that script directly onto head? I don't need to move 10 steps. But that should be pretty valuable, right? Now, but what's the problem? Uh, we also need to set the rotation style. So make sure the rotation style is left to right. Then it totally works.